For as long as I can remember, and that's over two decades, if not more, there have been talks about, by successive Nigerian governments, about ending gas wastage. Now, experts in oil and gas, and indeed development economists, identify two paradoxical reasons why this action has become imperative. In the first instance, you only need to visit surrounding areas, especially in the host oil communities in the Niger Delta, to understand the spillover devastating impact of flared gas on almost all sectors of our economy, from environment, agriculture, health, water, and of course the livelihood of residents within those areas. On the other hand, the volume of flared gas, if properly channeled, could also improve the country's GDP by very, very wide margin. In simple terms, let's look at what gas flaring is. It is described as a process in which natural gas associated with petroleum extraction is burned off into the atmosphere. Now, instead of being channeled into other uses by alternative means, of course, that would require infrastructural uh, development. Now, Nigeria has the 12th largest natural gas reserve in the world, according to available statistics. But much of it, as we already know, is wasted into the atmosphere. That's in the form of gas flaring. And there are over, at present, 170 gas flare points discovered across the country, with as much as over 800 million standard cubic feet of gas flared on a daily basis, and I stand to be corrected. Now, again, the latest statistics you know, indicate that Nigeria is placed seventh on the global list of nations that are still flaring gas. Again, uh, between 2016 and 2017, we understand that gas flared increased from 244.84 billion standard cubic feet to 287.59 standard cubic feet. That's the much of gas uh, fled within uh, one year. So, how much is the price that Nigeria is paying? Huge, I'm told. Nigerians are worried that the country is burning money, huge sums of money, that would have been channeled into developing critical areas of our economy. So, how is Nigeria, Nigeria addressing gas flaring? Is the 2020 target date feasible? On late edition today, we examine combination of policy interventions that have been adopted by successive governments in gas production and ending gas flaring. I am Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak. Honorable Joseph Akinlaja is Chairman House Committee in Petroleum Resources Downstream. He was General Secretary of Nupeng, that's between 2000 and 2004. And I'm sure you also remember that Honorable Joseph Akinlaja was also Deputy President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, between 2000 
and 2006 and I do say that he is of course uh, an expert of course when we talk about oil and gas. Now Justice Derefaka is the program manager Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program NGFCP. Now this is domiciled in the office of the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. The NGFCP is an initiative of the federal government to implement policies geared towards achieving the much sought after end to gas flare in the country. And as I said earlier on, justice is managed against safety and environmental issues for one of the oil you know, companies in, in the Niger Delta, the Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC. He's also worked with Shell Nigeria Exploration and Production Company, holds a bachelor's degree in marine engineering and two master's degrees one in environmental management from University of Lagos and of course uh, the other in sustainable leadership from Cambridge University in the UK. Gentlemen, I am really honored to have both of you uh, here on Late Edition this week. Thank you. Thank you mm. for having me. Thank you Claire for having me. Yeah, uh, Honorable, I, I'm, I'm starting with you. Okay, let, 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 me, let me swap it because Justice is you know from the Niger Delta. He has been, you know, with the oil companies. You've worked with the oil companies, so you must have you know wide knowledge about this. In order for our, the viewer to appreciate the enormity of what we're discussing, that's gas flaring. And I'd like us to put a face, you know, to the issue. What exactly do we mean? We hear gas flaring. Can you just give us a vivid a description of what it is? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, very briefly, um, gas flaring happens when, for instance, when um, an exploration production company go into a particular acreage they've been licensed to operate uh, with the intent to um, uh, explore for crude oil. And in the course of exploring for crude oil, they uh, found some uh, gas as alongside it. So when they're exploring and getting out the crude oil, it comes along with gas. And that's why we call it associated gas. Now that gas, for some reason, maybe perhaps um, uh, the geology is not amenable for reinjection. So, um, and perhaps maybe there is no uh, economic value for the producers. Well, when, when you talk about geology for reinjection, please would like you to, you know, uh, explain okay. Okay. such terms. So, so what that means is that uh, basically globally, when uh, you drill a particular oil well, what you can get for heavy crude oil, what you can get is around 40, 50 percent. Now, to make the oil, crude oil come out more, you need to increase the pressure. So you, you need to reinject gas to increase the pressure okay. in the oil in the, the, well in the well to bring out uh, enough crude oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what if the geology is not amenable, you don't you can't do reinjection, mm -hmm. and then perhaps they don't have they don't have need for it on site to generate electricity, mm -hmm. and then they don't have um, a market for it. And or most times because of the terrain they are, there is no um, infrastructure mm -hmm. to move that uh, gas uh, out. So in, in that case. They're left with no choice but to flare to the atmosphere, and that, mm -hmm. that's what happened. And um, in other areas, in other in other parts, where, where producers try to use this this gas is for um, gas lift. And so, so gas, what they do is that they reinject that, that gas into the annulus of uh, a producing well. Now this time it's not a reservoir well, a producing well, to as much as possible try to bleed the well to bring more crude oil. On, on, on the surface. So, so, so the red flame, because if, if you if you travel along the or within the Niger Delta, the oil producing areas, you know, at some point you see, you know, red flame in the in the atmosphere yeah. that we see. You know, how, how do we explain that? Is, is is that the flare? That is a flare that they don't have any use for. So the only way to get it out of their uh, facility is to pass it through a flare stack and then um, emit it to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Anubakin Laija, what, what's, what's your understanding of that? Maybe, maybe from your end we'll be able to appreciate it even much simpler. Well, uh, he has described the process. Well, we look at the effect, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's an associated gas which if left could cause explosion. Okay. Yeah, if okay. left, yes. It has to be dispersed one way or the other. Okay. Um, but 
technology made it possible for you to reject that uh, gas okay. that you don't fly to the atmosphere because for environmental pollution, mm. uh, heat generated that destroy, destroy aquatic and, uh, and vegetation, uh, you know, are the side effect of such flare. Mm. So we look at the effect uh, as an as a, an oil man myself, mm. you know, I travel extensively in the Niger Delta area, where uh, crude oil is produced, and this flare takes place. I could see that some major people, some skin is baked, you mm. know. Let, let's long let's time effect yeah. Of yeah. Such, let, let's such talk about flare. the reinjection. Yeah. Yes, because you, you've just said something. Justice said oil, oil companies in the, in the process of exploration that do not have a need, yeah. you know, to, of course, say, generate electricity or whatever, mm -hmm. and do not have the capacity to re-inject. Yeah. You, you have talked about technology to re-inject. Yeah. Does it mean that the oil companies, you know, that flare gas, do not have this technology? To re inject? They do, but uh, they consider the cost implication to them. And since uh, authorities, Nigerian authorities, provided uh, an alternative, you know, uh, they, they went, they usually went for the alternative. And what is this alternative? Maybe you take two cobalt per cubic uh, that you flare. Uh, if you compare that cost with uh, the cost of processing the technology to reject and preserve mm. it oh, there for the future, mm. you know, you go for, uh, like water uh, passes through uh, part of least resistance, you know. So that is uh, what, what happened, mm. you know. You, it, it's a cost. They look at the economics of it. Mm. The, the economics of it, justice, this. Most of the oil companies, of course, involved in, in the hazard are also into joint ventures, you know, with, with NNPC, which of course holds the interest for, for, for Nigeria. Whose responsibility is it, you know, to make available this technology to re-ingest, you know, the excess gas? Okay, um, normally when these, um, these fields are developed, that's what we call a feed development plan that is approved by uh, government regulatory authorities. Mm. So they, they prefer different alternatives towards um, uh, the associated gas. And once this, this is approved, that is what the um, producers um, run with. And the other bit, just like uh, Honorable Joseph mentioned, um, they could inject the associated gas and then leave it there in, in, in the reservoir. That's of course sequester, sequestration. And then later they bring it back. But all of those are subject to approval by authorities. So the alternative, like uh, um, he initially mentioned, is that uh, the oil companies has to flare. And then, so when you flare, there is a regulation that says when you flare, you pay uh, 10 Nara, which uh, two, three months ago was 10 Nara, um, equivalent to 0 0.03 cents per thousand scope of gas that you flare. Uh, in your oil money lease or oil marginal fee that you operate. Mm. Now, flaring, the, the, the history of flaring, gas flaring, is as old as, you know, the history of uh, oil discovery in Nigeria itself. Uh, we, we, we understand as far back as, uh, you know, 50s. 1956. Pre precisely, we've been flaring. Mm -hmm. So, can we, you know, feel the enormity of the impact of, of, of gas flaring. Honorable, can I just started talking about the agent, the impact of the agent? Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, we feel it. One is economic loss, heavy economic loss to the, to the country, you know, and two, and the impact, I said it, on vegetation is incalculable and also on aquatic life. Mm. You know, there's no, definitely the fishes will migrate from those areas where the heat is, uh, is much. And, uh, that, and, and you know the people around this area rely in much more on aquatic uh, uh, life. Mm. Um, so the impact is both economic, environmental, social. and also social. Mm. Yes. Justice, I, I know you come from, you know, Okirika, you, you told me, in River State. Right. Within that axis, 
if you're traveling from rivers, you know, I know you're going to pass through LMA. You have, you know, gas. There's, there's a bit of gas running around, around those areas, mm -hmm. down Oyibo and all that. Mm -hmm. Just g give us, l l let us have, you know, a feel of what it is, you know, that people who live within those surroundings go through in terms of the, the, the heat, in terms of, you know, the impact on the, their way of life. Okay. Um, let, me, let me start by saying that uh, overall, um, gas flaring is a tremendous waste. A waste of uh, natural resources, even especially in this climate, in a climate change perspective. And what gas flare does is that uh, it contributes around 2% of total greenhouse gas emission globally. And the gas that will flare, just like Honorable Joseph mentioned, it is a waste of our economic resource. The gas that will flare can actually contribute positively to the uh, global um, uh, energy transition, which is the closest ally to renewables. Now, if you, if you look at the Niger Delta terrain, why well, I would say gas flaring must stop mm -hmm. from a government position is that, uh, according to UNEP report, uh, they say that uh, close to um, 600,000 people die as a result of air pollution in Africa hmm. alone. And gas flare is a key air pollution in the Niger Delta communities. So if, if the UNEP say, says that uh, 600,000 people die uh, per year from uh, air pollution, which means 600,000 people can die in a small community in mm. Baeza called Polaco mm. from gas flare. Uh, that's, how, that's the impact of it. Now, these people in the Niger, there was a study that was carried in, Bi in Baeza that shows that it, it resulted into uh, premature death, um, um, uh, uh, deterioration of uh, uh, buildings. It, it causes um, uh, you struggle with your breathing and other, is other health related issues. Mm -hmm. so, so as, as, as a world, it's, it's detrimental and it's not something that as a nation will be proud of. Mm -hmm. And again, this now contributes to um, the health budget of the federal government, including the state government. Because when people face these issues, that means they have to go to the hospital every other day. Mm -hmm. So who pays for the bill? and all of those. Now, the money that the producing companies pay as part of a gas flare penalty, mm -hmm. is it commensurate with the health budget? So government looked at all of this and said, this has to stop. So government came up with a policy position, mm -hmm. which is the uh, national gas policy that was approved by the Federal Executive Council last year, June mm -hmm. 2017. Just, so, just before you, 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 you know, fast forward to what uh, you know, the present efforts. I, I, I like for us to really understand because there have been various attempts to end gas flaring. We've moved from one deadline, you know, to another deadline. Now we're having 2020 deadline. Honorable, Honorable Akinlaija, do we just pay lip service to ending, you know, gas flaring? Because when you talk about it, people just shrug and say, mm, they have come again. <laughs> so have we really had any well thought out you know, strategy mm -hmm. targeted at ending gas flaring mm -hmm. or converting, you know, I mean, excess gas into productive use? Well, the world is going the gas way and we do not have a choice than to put down our leg now as government to ensure that deadlines are complied with. We ought to have complied with the deadlines, but attitudinal, Nigerian attitude, to issues. It's not only in this gap learning. If we leave things, we leave things to the last minute and we are faced with a fate accompli of having to shift the goalpost in, in, in our lifestyle. If uh, somebody say the deadline is October, the, the cycle is that they will still shift and we do shift. But the irony of it, or the sad aspect of that, is that when we will now decide to go into it, it become more expensive for us to do. I mean, that is the history of the gas development itself. When we take a policy that wants to develop our gas, we start from uh, Bonnier LNG, Finima, and so on and so forth. We slow down. The other people take the market ahead of us. When we now come to the train no, too, then they become more expensive and they were into so attitudinal. But it ought not to be so. And I believe that this 2020 
deadline or the deadline that is fixed now. Government will put that they are serious now to put down their feet and we should do it. Yes, but, 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 but we also want, but, to, we, but, we also want but, to look at I'm, past, past I'm, efforts. I'm yes. coming about past. When Noel was discovered in 1956, it was not a hoe, a hoe and cutlass affair. It was a technology that is beyond us. Mm. And definitely sometime somebody who is stronger than you in, in, in an issue has an, a, a comparative mm. advantage over you. Mm. So, yes. so when uh, and Nigeria was excited anyway that uh, this is crude oil produced in this part of the country and is fetching money for us for economic development. So they have advantage, something like a small blackmail, uh, if I put it uh, in a blunt, blunt and say, so if they don't do it, do you have alternative? Can you do it yourself? You know, and that is where we ought to have been thinking of can we or how, if they don't,